UCF 38, Tulane 31. Tulane, credit to them, continued fighting, kept coming back because they were down at one point, I believe, 31 to 14. They found a way to keep this thing close. But the bottom line is when when John Reese Plumley or John Rice Plumley, however you say Rice Reese, whatever Plumley, whenever Plumley plays, especially against AAC competition, he's the best player on the field. He just is. He's not a great passer, and we understand that. But look, uh, when you look at his stats, this guy, here we go, 17 out of 30 passing for 132 yards, one touchdown. But where he makes the difference is 18 carries for 176 yards. This is the Gus Malzahn offense. It is a beautiful disaster each and every week. Uh, UCF is now sitting with two losses, uh, only one of which is in the AAC but now uh, Tulane, UCF, and Cincinnati all have one loss in the AAC. Houston's still sitting back there with two losses. SMU has two losses. Uh, East Carolina has three. There's, this is a, a mess as far as who is going to actually win the AAC. But let's talk about UCF right quick. Harvey had 12 carries for 83 yards. Isaiah Bowser, 19 carries for 54 yards. They had 54 carries for 336 yards on that Tulane front seven. Averaged 6.2 yards per carry, and they had four touchdowns. That is the difference in the game. Just bottom line, they were more physical. They were the more talented team, and you could tell it early. They ran 84 plays to only 65 for Tulane. Tulane had two turnovers and was still able to come back in this ballgame, which is kind of surprising. Um, This was, you know, 468 total yards to 391. UCF had nine more first downs, had 30 to 21. Um... They had more yards per rush attempt, like all these things. And Tulane was still able to put themselves in a fight here. Uh, the success rate, UCF 45%. Standard down success rate. They stayed ahead of the chains 49%, 49.21%. This was great. Uh, they had two sacks. UCF did. Um, Tulane had no sacks. They had four tackles for loss. Uh, UCF had four quarterback hurries. And that certainly put Michael Pratt behind the eight ball. The, Tulane... You knew it was coming eventually, or at least you thought it would, because of the way that the team has looked in in multiple spots. Uh, But this was, I don't think they expected this at home from UCF, right? At UCF, they they have their they have their spots where they haven't been great, right? Especially you look at what they did at East Carolina. The biggest difference here is the fact that UCF did not turn the football over. Like Plumlee came back from concussion protocol after a couple of weeks, and did not turn the ball over. That's how they were able to win this ball game. And so they, I mean, they really controlled it from, from the word go. They, they were up, I think, 17-7 to seven in the first quarter. Like, this was, this was absolute, yeah, 17-7 to seven after the first. Uh, they put up another touchdown in the third, while Tulane only had, you know, the field goal. And, uh, and then Tulane scores two touchdowns in the fourth. It was... It was really something to see. Michael Pratt, by the way, 23 out of 39 passing, 236 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Tajay Spears, eight carries for 130 yards. He averaged 16.3 yards clip. Like, this dude was awesome. And yet, it was not enough. It was not enough. You needed that UCF turnover. You didn't get it. And that's the way it goes. That is the way it goes. UCF in the driver's seat in the AAC right now. They are probably going to be the highest-ranked group of five team in this next CFP rankings. Not that any of that necessarily matters, but regardless, here we are. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.